So this treatment is the Faradic facial treatment. The Faradic machine is using the pulses, uh, the electrical uh, connection is a Faradic. However, the actual treatment is more widely known as the EMS treatment, which is the electrical muscle stimulator. Now remember, um, on your exam papers, they rarely use Faradic to explain this treatment. They use EMS or electrical muscle stimulator. So uh, just be aware that this is one and the same thing. The machine that you use is the Faradic machine that you used on the body treatment. And um, that will have the eight connections because we had eight connections to the body when we were using Faradic on the body. However, with this machine, you're only using one of those dials because you only have one lead. You only need one lead because the muscles on the face are so much smaller. So you have the one lead, the lead that you would normally use on the body, but only one of them. You would then put your red and your black into your pad, your phoretic pad, and um, you should be able to see that there's two little pads on there. That's better. Two little pads. They're acting as the big pads that you put on the actual body when we did the body one. Saline solution is used as your conductor, just like it was on the body treatment. So you want to dissolve that salt. So when you make up your solution, you don't need a lot. It's only for the face. So you put your salt in a bowl and you add um, quite hot water so that you can dissolve the salt. And then obviously that will cool down before it goes onto your pads. You'd put the salt water onto your pads with a piece of um, cotton wool soaked into the saline solution. So this treatment will actually uh, be placed after you've exfoliated and steamed and before you massage. So you're going to do your phoretic treatment in between there. So your face has been cleaned, it's been cleansed, it's been, uh, the products have been changed for the skin type. You've done your exfoliation, your steaming, and then this would, uh, the phoretic treatment would then step in. Straight after this, you do your massage, you're straight back onto the normal routine. So you do your massage, you would do your um, mask, and then you would uh, take the mask off, tone and moisturise um, like you normally would. So this treatment is for a client that has um, muscles that are starting to droop. It's to um, send a current straight into the motor point of the muscles, bypassing the brain, the normal process of moving muscles. And so it's placed on the motor points and it sends a current into your client's skin uh, which, uh, and into the muscle, which allows the muscle to move. So this muscle movement is far more effective than any muscle movement that you can do yourself by moving your face, because there are routines for uh, facial massage that you can use. Um, and facial exercises, but this is far, far more effective because it goes deep into the muscle group. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the normal process of muscle. So we've got um, the first one, which is coming down here. You have one coming here under the chin, one for the jaws, so just under the jawline here, and of course this would be on the other side here, the cheek is quite a large area, the zygomaticus muscle, so you're going to do two on the cheek and one on the forehead. So just for the tape we're doing one here, here, under jaw, upper jaw, cheek, cheek and forehead. So when you're actually doing this treatment, just be aware that these two wires are quite rigid. So you've got to place them so that they're not sticking into your clients somewhere else. So for instance, if I was doing under the jaw and I had my wires facing down, that's going to be sticking in her neck. Can you see those wires? They are um, sticking in my client's neck. So you would basically adjust this so that these wires are never sticking in your client. So I'd have them up for that one, this one, this one, this one, and the forehead. You won't, wouldn't want those wires, obviously, affecting the client's nose. So you would have that this way up. So this treatment, the very first 
thing you're going to do is check that the client's got sensation. So we've done our tactile or our thermal testing. We're making sure that our client has sensation. So we've done that test. That's a sensitivity test. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test the pads on our cells. So we're going to gently put that in our palm and go up on the dial very, very gently and make sure that there is a current coming through uh, the pads. The next thing you're going to do is put your salt water, more salt water on here. And as we know, salt water does clean and cleanse. <coughs> um, in these days of COVID, however, it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to actually go and rewash these pads because you touched them. Although you would have washed your hands before you do the treatment like any other treatment. And, and we're going to um, ask the client if she can feel sensation. So we're going up very, very, very slowly on the dial. The client, as soon as she can feel sensation, normally I get the client to lift her hand to let me know she can feel sensation. So she gets used to using her hand rather than her voice. After we've got sensation, I'm looking for a contraction. So I would now turn my dial up until I can see a movement in the muscle. That will tell me that I'm on the motor points and uh, the pads are in the right place. If you're going up and the client is in discomfort but the muscle isn't moving, the pads aren't in the right place. So you would take them off, you would turn the dial to zero, put more saline on, and replace and then go through the process again so step one sensation step two muscle movement step three tolerance level so once I can see the muscle moving and it's in the right place my client now as I go up my client is going to raise her hand to let me know that I'm at her tolerance level when I get to a tolerance level, um, I'm going to get um, six to eight contractions. So I count from the tolerance level. And I will count that muscle contraction, contracting six to eight times. When that's done, I can take the pad off and turn the dial down. And I can move on to the next part of the face. If the pads are dry and they're visibly dry, then you would add more salt. It wouldn't hurt to add more salt anyway. There's no harm in making sure that you've got um, good conductivity um, for, for the client. Once I've done the whole face, one side, I would go to the other side to do this side of the face. The reason being is I want to see the muscles moving. If I'm standing this side, I'm not visibly going to be able to see these muscles moving properly. So I pull my bed out from the wall, I put my machine behind the bed and enough room for me to walk around the back of the bed so I don't need to move my machine around. So you do one side of the face, then the other side of the face and then you would do the whole process again two more times. So you're going around the whole face three times. This treatment takes 15 minutes. So the reason why I've talked you through it now is because if I'm talking through it while this is on my client, she's going to be receiving an awful lot of uh, contractions and currents while I'm explaining each process. So um, that's all now covered. I'm going to go through the process um, and try to keep within the 15 minutes um, time scale that's required um, to perform this treatment. So I'm getting some salt water onto my pads. It's a bit chilly now, my water, but um, I don't think my client's going to worry about that when she feels this current. The machine is where I want it to be and it's on zero. I've already tested my machine. I don't want my pads sopping wet. There's nothing worse than water running down your face and it wouldn't be comfortable for the client. So if you have a quick look at your routines, you'll see the very first one, sternocleidomastoid muscle. That's going on here. And the first thing I want my client to do is to um, just gently raise her hand to let me know that she can feel a sensation. So it's just sensation first. So I'm going up very, very slowly and I'm going up on the pulse light. If you have a machine that buzzes, even better, <coughs> because then you don't need to look at the machine, you can listen for the buzz. This way I have to make sure that I'm looking at the machine to see the red light and I've got that firmly on my client's skin. I am holding the 
hand piece here, the rubber hand piece, so I'm not taking any current away from the client. And both pads are absolutely firm on the skin. Not light, not crooked, not, super uh, not superficial, just very, very firm. So, sensation uh, form, please. Jess, as soon as you can feel a sensation. Excellent. I know my client has got sensation and she can feel this current. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the um, contraction to make sure I'm on the motor point. So again, on the light. Okay, so you can see that I've got movement in my client's neck and you can see it ricochets all the way through. It's not just this muscle that will get worked out, it ricochets all the way through. So step number three is my client putting her hand up as soon as she can. Um, I'm at her tolerance level. Now, I need to say at this point, a client's tolerance level is different for everybody, yeah. but on both sides of the face, you need to try to keep the, uh, get the dials to go up to the same level so that both sides of the face is getting um, uh, the treatment at the same level of the same current level. So, set, uh, set a tolerance level for me, please, Jess. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll stay to six. Okay, I can take that off and turn my dial back to zero. Okay, so the next part I'm going to do now is going to be on the jowl area just under here. So I'll get a little bit more water on. Make sure that my wires are not sticking in my client. Get that nice and firm because it's a curved area. So it's hard to get, sometimes it's really hard to get both pads flat. And if they're not and they're lifted in any way and you accidentally put them back down, they're going to get a very nasty shock. So, sensation for me please. Okay. So I know that she has sensation in that part of her face. I'm now going to be watching for the first sign of a contraction. Now remember, it may not be where you think the movement's gonna be. Sometimes the contraction is gonna ricochet to a different part of the body. Okay, so you can see there that it's given the whole of Jessie's jawline um, a workout. And so now I know that I'm on the motor point, I'm going to ask my client to tell me her tolerance level. So again, on the light, on the bus. And you're going to do your count. Take the pad off and turn the dials back down to zero. Okay, so the next point we're going to go to is going to be underneath the jawline. Sorry, underneath the chin. So, sensation is the first thing that we're going to check for. So on the on the buzzer on the light again. And I'm going to ask my client to gently raise her hand when she can feel sensation. Excellent. Next thing I'm going to check for is contraction on the buzz again.
Okay, we've got that contraction now. And I'm now going to ask my client to, to put her hand up when we reach her tolerance level. Okay, so we're going to do our count from here. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to remove that pad, check that it's still damp, replace, and we're going through the process again. So you can see, once you get the hang of this, it will only take 15 minutes. So sensation for me, please. Yes, excellent. And now I'm looking for movement, the contraction. Try to stay still because the pads will move. Excellent. So you can see the contraction goes all the way through. And now I want my client to tell me when we're at a, at a tolerance level. Mm -hmm. You're already there, excellent. And we're gonna count our six from this point. Um, girls, your clients will know that the higher this machine goes, the more effective the treatment's gonna be. So your client's going to be paying a great deal of money for this treatment. She's going to want to get the best results she possibly can, which means she's gonna want you to go as high as possible. Now the danger here is that some people have got a really high pain threshold. So you're going to go to the level that they can take, but it could cause muscle fatigue because they can take a lot. So you've got to use your common sense as well. The other major problem is, is the client thinks sometimes that even the slightest little contraction is doing an, a, an incredible job. It's not. You could do that by talking if you're only moving the muscle gently. So obviously, the better results will be the more um, contraction you can get with this machine the client's going to get far better results but you've got to get the balance between it being too low or the client really wanting her money's worth and making you go much higher than what your common sense is telling you you should go so we'll put a little bit more saline on we're going to do the other areas so we've done the first part of the tube we're now doing this one make sure your wires are not sticking in your client and make sure that your and make sure that your um your wires are not sticking in your client make sure that your pads are flat because your cheek is curved it's harder to get these pads flat so um we're going to put them there like that and sensation sensation yet? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now I'm going to look for contraction. Mm. Okay, and now I'm going to ask for my client's tolerance level and I'm going to ask her to put her hand up when she's reached it and then <coughs> I'm going to do my count. Can you see that by doing this zygomaticus muscle it's actually working out the whole of the orbicularis oculi muscle the muscle around the eye so it's a very effective because it, it ricochets through the other muscles so we have a count of six we take this off we turn the dial all the way down so the last one will be the forehead just to pre-warn you the forehead does feel a little bit strange it feels totally different from any of the others so we'll probably go very low and uh, mm -hmm. because you're going to ask me to go very low so it's on zero, there's plenty of water on my pad, make sure my wires are facing up so they're not affecting my client uh, or um, coming down her face. Get the pads as firm as you can, again it's a curved area, so try to get the pads as flat as possible. And on the light we are going to check the sensation. Sensation, excellent. I'm now going to check for contraction. Any movement at all. It's hard to pick up on the camera, but you can actually see movement. And now I'm going to ask my client to tell me where her tolerance level is. And it will feel quite different, Jess, yeah?
Okay, we'll take that off, turn your dial all the way down. So, I would then walk to the other side and I would do exactly the same thing on the other side. I wouldn't need to do the areas that I've already done twice though. I've already done here, I've already done here, because they're in the centre. So you do the other side and then you would do the whole process two times more. Then don't forget to get that salt off of your client's face before you proceed with the treatment because the salt is very dehydrating and, and it can be it can irritate as well. You're probably going to find out. Um, so get that salt off the face and then proceed with your massage and your mask.